Hi and welcome to Measure and Draw Angles. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes chapter available for this video, just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So we're going to begin uh, by actually just naming different types of angle um, because it is important that we recognise them. Um, it will also help when we come to measure and draw some angles later on as it will help decide which part of the uh, protractor we're actually going to use. Now the first one we're looking at is the angle which has the little square drawn in the corner. The reason it has the little square is because this is like the corner of a square. A corner of a square is 90 degrees and the corner of a square is what is known as a right angle and it will always be exactly 90 degrees. When we start looking at the next two angles we are always comparing it to that right angle. So here we have an angle which is smaller. Here we have an angle which is larger. And so if the angle is smaller than 90 degrees, well that is known as an acute angle. If the angle is larger than 90 degrees, but not quite a straight line, um, a straight line which would be 180 degrees, well then that is known as an obtuse angle. So it's greater than 90, but less than 180. What happens when we go beyond 180? Well, then that's what's happened here. We are measuring the angle on the outside this time. And so because this angle has flexed beyond 180 degrees, a straight line, we call it a reflex angle. And so in each case, we have a rule Based on the, right, uh, on the right angle, an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is greater than 90, but less than 180 degrees. And the reflex greater than 180 degrees, but it is less than 360 degrees, which would be a full turn. So now on to measuring angles. Now what we need to do here is we need to first concentrate on the protractor itself. The protractor has a line going along the bottom. Now this line must be lined up with one of the lines which is forming the angle. There is a little cross also right in the very center that point is must be lined up exactly with the point of your angle. And so when we do that, we need to take our protractor. And the first thing we want to do is to line it up so that we have it lined up with one of the straight sides, which I have done. Then move it until that little cross in the center is right in the corner of my angle. And there we go. Now, if we have a look at the type of angle we are dealing with, this angle is an acute angle. It has not gone past the 90 degrees. And therefore we know that the answer must be less than 90 degrees. But if we look at the numbers here, we have two choices. We have an 80 here and a 100 and a 70 and a 110. Which set of numbers do we need to use? Well, the key is we want to start from zero. So we want to be using the, uh, the numbers on the inside here, because that is where zero is in line. So we're using the numbers on the inside. We've got to 70, but then we need to go a little bit further. So if we look around the outside here, there's a larger marking here. That is marking the midway point, so the five, uh, five degrees. So we've got 70, 75, 76. We have 77 degrees. And the symbol for degrees is a little circle above the numbers. Let's try that again for this angle. Now, if I were to rotate it, I want to rotate so that it is lined up. And I can do it from either side. I could line it up this way so that the straight line is in line with this. And then move the center of my protractor so it's right in the corner of the angle. 
And again, this time, we want to know what sort of angle are we dealing with. Well, we are dealing with an obtuse angle. This one has gone beyond 90 degrees. And we want to think which numbers are we going to use to measure it. Well, in this case, the zero is the numbers on the outside. And so we're going to use the outside numbers as we measure. So if I look around, I can get up to 120 here. But then I need to just count along a little bit further. So 120, 121, 122, 123 degrees would be the size of my second angle. Now sometimes the angle may be set up in a way that actually makes it quite difficult for us to, uh, to measure, but for you, if you're doing this on paper, you could just quite easily turn your, uh, turn your piece of paper around, or we can just turn the protractor around, and we'll turn it upside down. The numbers are still going to be able to be read, and we can still measure our angle exactly as we did before. This is, once again, an acute angle. It is much less than 90 degrees. And if we think about the numbers on the inside, again, this is the line I used to line up with. The zero is on the outside, and therefore is the outside numbers I need to use to measure. I've reached 30, and if I just look, I'm actually on the exact midway point between 30 and 40. And so what I actually have here is 35 degrees. The final angle we have here, now this one, if we think about what we were talking about in terms of naming, this one has gone beyond 180 degrees. And so this is a reflex angle. Now if you see that you need to measure a reflex angle, there is a bit of a problem. We don't know how to, uh, how to uh, measure that as our protractor only actually goes to 180 degrees. And so what we have are two different methods that we could use. Now one of them is to extend the line that we have here in order to create a straight line. Because what that does is it tells me that this piece must be 180 degrees. The straight line must be 180. I can then add the extra little piece into it. And so I can, again, line up my protractor with the line that we drew and just measure the angle on the inside. Now, in this case, we're going to be using the outside numbers and it's 80 degrees. And so I could say that then this piece is 80 and so to get the total of that angle, well, I will add 180 plus 80, and that would give me 260 degrees. That would be the size of the entire angle around the outside. The other option, though, is to actually measure the angle that is on, uh, that we don't want to know. So the angle which was not part of the um, of the reflex angle and in this case again we're going to use the inside numbers because that's where zero is zero ten twenty all the way around it comes to 100 degrees and so if i just take my protractor away it tells me that this angle is 100 degrees now for a reflex angle the entire turn here will be 360 so another option is to subtract the angle which we didn't want. So 360 take away 100 gives me 260 degrees. I get the same answer from both methods. So next we're going to look at drawing some angles. So we've been asked to draw an angle of 65 degrees. Now for all angles, the first thing we actually need is a straight line. So the first thing we're going to do is just draw ourselves a straight line. And that is what we're going to use to line our protractor up with. And so in this case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with the line I've drawn and then place that little cross right on the very end of the line because this is going to form the, um, form the very point of my angle. Now, I've been asked for an angle of 65 degrees. And so in here, all I need to do is decide which of the uh, two sets of numbers I'm going to use. Well, zero is on the inside, so I'm going to use the inside numbers, and I'm going to find 65 degrees. Well, this marking here is 60 degrees, and so the larger 
one here will be 65. And all I've done there is just made a little mark at the edge of my protractor. I'll take the protractor away. Now for you, you'd want to take out a ruler, but I can just draw straight lines like this. And all I would want to do is make sure that I draw straight through the point that I marked. Now it's also important that we do mark which bit of the angle we were interested in. It was the inside of that angle, and therefore we just mark that as 65 degrees. Next, we're asked to draw an angle of 120 degrees. So again, all I want to do to start with is drawing a straight line. And again, I want to line up my protractor with the line I've just drawn, and then place the cross right at the very end. And again, here, I'm going to use the inside numbers because that is where zero is. 10, 20, 30, round to 90, 100, 110, 120 that will be marked right here now actually it's the second of the two points that i just drew so 60 degrees take away my protractor and draw through the point that i marked and we wanted the inside of that angle that is 120 degrees Drawing an angle of 45 degrees. Again, same thing. To start off with a straight line, take your protractor and place it on that line. Line it up and draw it this way. Now what we could do, if we really want to, we could do it from the other side. It would still be the same, uh, same process. If I line it up on the right hand side though, I just need to be aware that the zero is the outside numbers this time. And so 10, 20, 30, 40, 45 is going to be just here. And so if I take my protractor away, this time I need to make sure I draw it from the right hand side as that's the side I was measuring. Draw my line through and the 45 degrees is on the inside. The last one though is drawing an angle of 220 degrees. Now, first thing to spot here, 220 degrees, that must be a reflex angle as it is more than 180 degrees. Now, in terms of drawing the angle, just like there were two, uh, two versions of uh, measuring a reflex angle, there are also two ways of drawing it, but they would both begin with drawing a straight line. Now, the first version would start with me actually um, just marking where the end of this line is. So I'm going to just put a little point there to tell me that that is the end of my line. Because one way of me to draw this angle would be to actually extend this line a bit further. And that is giving me the first 180 degrees. The rest of this angle, I would then measure. So if I had 180 degrees, to get up to 220, I would need another 40 degrees. And so I could let's, uh, line up my protractor with the line that I've drawn and with the center of this line this time. I could measure the 40 degrees and there it is. And I could take my tractor away draw in the straight line but what we need to be aware of here is in order to show that this is the 220 degrees I would actually need to erase the line that I created here and the 220 degrees would actually be this section here now that is one way of doing it but again the other version is if we know it is a reflex angle of 220 degrees, we could, first of all, do 360 take away 220 to find out what the remainder was. And so that would leave me with 140 degrees. Now with my protractor, if I were to just draw an angle of 140 degrees, like I have done here, which is on the inside, once I've drawn the 140 degrees, I can mark the outside of it 
as 220 degrees and that will also form the same angle and so we end with the exam question and these uh, both came from key stage three sats questions um, we start off with a question which simply asks us to measure angle a accurately now the word accurately um, actually we do need to talk about um, within exams um, because uh, our protractors are not particularly great uh, in terms of actually measuring accurately you will be given one or two degrees uh, leeway either side of the exact answer and so all we need to do is we need to grab our protractor and as we've done previously make sure that we get it lined up with one of the lines of our um, of our angle and then lined up with the very center of the angle and here what we need to do you might actually need to extend the lines a little bit further just to be sure that you've got the correct uh, correct answers so you can do that you can add a little bit more to your line in order to make sure that your protractor will uh, is easy to read and so there for me um, I am finding that it is between either 70 and 80 or 100 and 110 the question is which of those answers is correct well zero is on the inside number so it's the inside numbers I'm using and it is between 70 and 80 and it's right on that extended dash and therefore I would be calling this 75 degrees in terms of the second question um, we're asked the di uh, that this diagram has four angles marked a b c and d write the letters of the angles that are obtuse angles now for this one you could use your, uh, your protractor and you could measure each of the different angles but actually this one is just more of a case of being able to recognize them um, which ones are obtuse means which ones are larger than 90 degrees well straight away a if this was 90 degrees it would stop about here but it goes further so a is definitely an obtuse angle b well that is a very very small angle and therefore that is not an obtuse angle it's actually an acute angle c well again that has not gone to the point of a right angle which would be about here so that is only acute d is quite a large angle it's gone beyond 90 degrees so d is another obtuse angle 